Good afternoon, Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times on Monday, July the 11th. I think the big news in the country continues to be the reaction to police shootings in Dallas, the killing of five Dallas police officers by a troubled man who wanted to shoot white police officers. But this follows recent demonstrations about police shootings of black suspects or non-suspects in fact, in fact in some other cities and, and demonstrations have broken out all across the country. They reached the border of Arkansas last night when a crowd of a thousand or so blocked the Interstate 40 bridge from Memphis to Arkansas in a demonstration. City officials in Memphis led a group of people away from the bridge in a, in a nonviolent way and no arrests were made. This was in contrast with some other cities where hundreds, hundreds of people were arrested for blocking roadways. I don't think we've seen the end of it. I know there are Arkansas angles that are surely to inflame things. Mike Huckabee took to the air to say that, that uh, white uh, are more likely to be shot by police than blacks are. Well, as a, as a percentage of the population, you're much more likely to be shot by police as a black man than as a white man. But in raw numbers, his, his number is somewhat correct. He isn't backing off. Circle Judge Wendell, Circuit Judge Wendell Griffin, a black preacher in his spare time, has issued one of his provocative statements saying the actions of the shooter in Dallas were murderous and wrong, but that still some thoughts should be given to the use of military tactics of bomb-carrying robot to deal, with, to deal with the shooter rather than to attempt to arrest him while he was still alive. This, this debate is going to continue. Today is a deadline for Mike Maggio to submit a brief to the Eighth Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals trying to withdraw his guilty plea in the case in which he's alleged to have taken a bribe to reduce a jury verdict against a nursing home. He's expected to argue that the facts that apply in this case don't meet the federal definition of bribery, particularly in light of some recent Supreme Court rulings. It'll take a while to decide that case. Our favorite character, Senator Jason Rayford of Conway, the bumptious Republican, got into it again over the weekend with one of his 18 minute, minute video specials. You can find it on our website. He responded to somebody who said that they thought Hillary and President Obama should be hanged for treason, that he could understand how they felt that way. He didn't invoke the Ten Commandments, which he wants to put in monument form on the Capitol grounds. You may remember the Ten Commandments urge us not to kill anyone. Uh, elsewhere, uh, Court filings indicate that the Conway police have expanded their investigation of Robert Rook, the Conway general practitioner who's been accused of raping three patients in his office. They've sought a search warrant to get further patient records from him about as many as 15 women who reportedly have made some similar allegations against the doctor. No additional charges have been filed, however. We've gotten further confirmation over the weekend that there is going to be a gathering of former world leaders in Little Rock this week. It may be private. It's, a, it's part of a graduation uh, ceremony put on by a program of, the, of a combination of the presidential libraries. It could be that Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, and Tony Blair may be in town Thursday, whether the public will get to hear them and their thoughts on Brexit and the Iraq war and presidential politics. That remains to be seen, but we'll be keeping watch. Uh, some reading uh, material for you to take a look at on the Arkansas blog at arkansasblog.com. One is a great piece by University of Arkansas Pre Professor Angie Maxwell and head of the Blair Center on Southern Politics about the influence of uh, Southernism, you might say, in the Tea Party uh, and how Southern racism has become really an identifiable force in the Tea Party movement, at least in the South, somewhat different from the North. And Southern Tea Party members tend to be more women, younger, and uh, not very well educated, which this happens to have some correlation to the Donald Trump campaign, by the way, not to necessarily point you in the direction of education when I talk about that. Uh, <clears throat> also, good reporting over the weekend by Leslie Peacock on the blog about opposition to uh, growth of subdivisions west of the city of Little Rock that rely on prepackaged sewage treatment plants, that is, operated by the subdivisions. These are notorious for problems because they're not as operated with as much oversight as, say, a city sewage treatment system is. The story is interesting, too, because how much it reveals about the way a legislator who sells sewage treatment systems, Andy Davis, a Republican from West Little Rock, has passed legislation repeatedly to help his business. It perhaps doesn't uh, help good proper operation of sewage treatment plants, but it holds, holds some operators harmless when things do happen. And finally, news from Yale University. Students there have been trying for a year and unsuccessfully, finally, to get the name of slavery advocate John Calhoun removed from the name of a residential college at Yale University. They lost that battle, but one 
positive fallout was is they've renamed the dining room in this historical structure for Roosevelt Thompson, a 1984 Yale graduate who, who died very shortly before he was to go to England to be a Rhodes Scholar. He was a young black man who held immense prom promise. A library is named for him in Little Rock. It's, uh, his death remains a tragedy 30 years later, but he will be remembered perhaps for posterity in a, something of an ironic place at Yale University. We remember Rosie fondly. I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back tomorrow.